Hey, this is Mark, and in this video, I'm going to share the exact four-step framework I currently use to design, build, and launch a website. Ready? Let's go. Starting out as a new web designer, it can be hard to know where to start or how to approach a web design project. For most professional web designers, the process of developing a cohesive framework for building a website for a client is something that takes them years to refine and develop. For a lot of new web designers who start at an agency, they typically adapt that agency's framework for their own freelance work. But what if you haven't worked at an agency and never learned a framework? Well, not to worry, because today I'm gonna to share the framework I currently use to build a website. And I'm gonna let you know what parts of this process I would leave in or take out depending on what sort of website I'm building, whether it's for a client or for myself. If you want to come across as a pro web designer, then a large part of that is having a system and process that you can use and gives your client confidence that you know what you're doing, that you can take care of their needs and solve their problems. I mean, web design problems, of course, you can't really solve their personal life problems. Hey, if you're new to this channel, and you probably are since this is the second video, <laughs> then you've stumbled across Akamai websites. My name is Mark Moran, and I've been building websites for over 20 years, and I teach web design at the University of Hawaii, and this channel is where I help new and aspiring web designers level up their professional and freelancing game. But enough about me, let's get into the framework. So there are a few things that are important to keep in mind about this framework. First, Every website you build is going to be different. They each have different requirements. So this isn't really a one size fits all situation. You can think of this more like a choose your own adventure. The core elements of the story are the same, but there will be parts that you can take out or leave in based on the needs of the project. Second, this framework is essentially everything that is part of the website build, but it doesn't include other important steps like understanding the requirements, preparing a proposal, initial client meetings, signing agreements, setting up a client portal, setting meetings and all that other stuff. This is just about the process of building the site. We'll definitely get into all the other stuff in a future video, so be sure to subscribe for all that goodness. Third, it is important to mention the difference between a client project and a personal project. Basically with a client project, almost all the information is coming from the client. So it's important to have a discovery session to understand the parameters and goals of the project, understand their SEO strategy, and how the website fits into their overall digital marketing strategy. With a personal project, on the other hand, you don't have to ask for feedback and all the information is coming from you. So you can take out a lot of those discovery elements and just focus on the essentials. But you'll also need to come up with a strong why for the project because Without someone there to keep you accountable, you can sometimes lose motivation to finish up your website build. Been there, done that. Fourth, and finally, a few tips to help you out when adapting this framework for your own use. One, make a checklist. Just like a pilot on a plane or an astronaut on the launch pad, you need a checklist to follow each time you make a website. Two, iterate on that checklist. Don't be afraid to take things out or add new things in. Technology is always changing so your methods should change along with it. Identify those things you can automate and find the bottlenecks in your process. The goal is to create the most efficient and streamlined system you can because you're a designer and designing is the process of editing. So edit liberally and keep improving your process. Right, so with all that out of the way, here is my framework. I have my system set up in the four phases which I call the four Ds because, well, they each start with D, so. Yeah, they are discovery, design, development, and deployment, and let's go through each one. Discovery is about understanding the scope of the site, who it's for, and how it solves their problems. If I'm working with a client, I'll hold a kickoff meeting to help everyone get on the same foot, set weekly meetings, onboard them into my system, and I also run a discovery workshop. This typically lasts between two and three hours and is usually the longest meeting of the whole project. We cover some details about their needs, but it really boils down to the four main questions. These are the same four questions I try to answer myself if I'm making my own website. They are, one, who is the website for? Who is the target audience? Two, 
What do those people need? What are their problems or goals? Three, what are the barriers to those problems that the client or myself can solve? What benefit do they receive by going to the website? And finally, four, what is the bandwidth for maintaining and taking care of the website? Because if they aren't able to actually take the time to write a blog, then there probably shouldn't be a blog on the site. I also like to find out about their SEO strategy or if they even have one because most small businesses don't. I don't really do SEO myself because it's a very involved process if done the right way. But I do know SEO specialists that I can refer them to. Side tip, build up your network of other professionals that can fill in your gaps. Once all of that is figured out, the next thing I do is craft a user persona. This is an archetype of their target audience member. I'm actually going to walk you through my process for crafting a user persona for Akamai websites in the next video, but the main takeaway is that it should be precise, specific, and tell a story. But again, the next video will share a lot more details on that. With client work, I also like to have a functionality document worked out. Since you're trying to figure out solutions to help these people's problems, what features does the website need to provide those solutions? These could be things like forms, blogs, web apps, API integrations, and a lot more. The last part of the discovery process is building a sitemap. This starts off as a simple sketch and then goes more high fidelity from there. But the idea here is to lay out the structure of the content of the site in a way that is intuitive and easy to follow. This falls under the umbrella of information architecture, but that is a deep dive for another time. Now it is on to the second D, design. This is often the part of the process that gets most visual designers excited and might be what attracted you to web design in the first place. After the sitemap is finalized, I'll often do a quick design discovery with a client. For my own project, that usually just means coming up with the colors and typography I would like to use, but for a client, I'll add in getting direction on imagery, what they want to use, and any assets or logos, their own style guide, colors, photos, etc. that they might have that I can integrate into the design. Usually, this design discovery is as simple as sending a link to a form that I've set up on our website. It also includes questions about competitor sites, websites they like the look of, websites with the functionality or scope they're looking for, and design preferences that they might have. And yes, I plan to do a full video on design discovery in the future too. I am definitely not hurting for video ideas on this channel. The next part of the design phase is coming up with wireframes. And there are two ways I go here depending on the scope of the project. For those who don't know, a wireframe is basically a low fidelity version of the pages of the site. The purpose is to help know where content on the site goes, the hierarchy of the content, and the general layout of items on the page, as you can see in the example on the right. My first possible approach is to create static wireframes in a tool like Adobe XD or Figma, and the other is to create interactive prototypes directly on the web using WordPress and a page builder. Each has pros and cons. If the project is larger in scope and there are a lot of moving pieces and use case requirements, then I'll go down the UX path by creating static wireframes. This allows me to build out specific user flows through the different screens. If the project doesn't require me to build out user flows, then I often jump straight to interactive prototype. This means I install WordPress on a test server, I set up a coming soon and client login, set up the pages and menus, and then frame out all of the content using a page builder like Elementor. The pro of interactive wireframe is that, well, it's interactive. The client can actually click around and use the wireframe like it was a website. It also saves me time down the line for building everything later since I can then use the interactive wireframe prototype as the skeleton for the actual website. The con is that you don't end up with designed wireframes in XD or Figma that you can then bring over for your visual mockups. But honestly, that isn't a huge con. Basically, 90% of the time I go with the interactive prototype. And if I need to work on user flows, then I'll do it static. Once the wireframes are approved, I then provide the client with a way for them to submit the content that will go on the page. Since we know the page structure, this is a good chance for them to start writing stuff out. How you collect content is also a really good video topic because this is often one of the biggest headaches for most designers. And in my experience, often the biggest bottleneck to getting the site done. But again, a topic for another day. The last part of the design phase are mockups or high fidelity visual mockups. These are the beautiful looking page designs that will hopefully delight and inspire your client. And I will usually make these in Adobe XD. Back in the day, we used to use Photoshop or Illustrator, but these days we have better tools for the job. 
XD, Figma, or Sketch are the most popular ones. Sometimes I'll do some prep for this phase and set up a web style guide or some mood boards, but if the design discovery was done well, that often isn't necessary. With the mock-ups, I'll focus on the homepage first to make sure I have a good idea of the overall visual style of the site. Then, when that is approved, I'll go through and create mock-ups for any unique pages on the site, as well as the standard page templates. Unique pages refers to pages that have a different visual style or layout than any other page. For example, a portfolio page or a specific product page. Standard pages are things like the search results page, the blog post, the blog archive, or a static page template for a privacy policy. A 404 page is usually a part of this too. For a basic site, this means having about seven or eight mockups for the different types of pages. For a larger site, you can end up with a few dozen pages. A quick word on prototyping designs. I don't usually do this for websites unless there is a lot of complex animation or interactivity, but usually the mockups on its own is enough, and I might provide a visual prototype where they can click to each page in the menu. Again, it depends on the scope of the project. And here we are at the third D development. This is where we build the site. Now, if I made interactive wireframe prototypes before, then a lot of that work is already done for me. But if not, then I'll usually install the site framework or content management system I'm using for the site. These days, 99% of the time that is WordPress. So I also make sure to install my standard stack of plugins, theme files, and extensions and start building out the site's structure of pages, menus, and content types. After the skeleton of the site is there, I start working on the organs, meaning the technology that needs to be integrated to make the site do what it should. These can be custom types and ACF plugins, any custom functionality that needs to be built, API integrations with third-party software like Zapier, setting up forms, social media integration, email marketing integration, and a lot more. Once those pieces are in place, I start working on the content integration. I take all the content provided by the client, make sure it is placed in the site. This might be static page content or data entry, and it might also include integrating media that they have provided, such as embedded videos, audio files, or images. And finally, I work on integrating the high fidelity design mockups on the site. I'll start with global elements like the header and footer, and then go through each page to make sure each section or module is integrated too. In practice, these last three items are often done in tandem. I might be integrating content and designs at the same time while also building out certain functions on the site. It depends on the project and what needs to get done. Often there are contingencies where you need to build one thing in order to build another, so that might dictate the order. At the end of the development phase, we'll often do a review of the content to make sure it still makes sense and matches the needs of the user persona and target audience. At last, we come to the fourth D, deployment. For all projects, this includes testing the site to make sure it works, getting rid of any bugs that show up, going through my extensive pre-launch checklist, and finally launching the website. If I'm working on a client site, I will also deliver any files they need along with logins and access to help them set up their maintenance package and provide any training they require on how to use the website. I have a ton of tools I use for each of these tasks and I'll be sharing videos on each of them in the future. So be sure and subscribe so you don't miss out. So there you have it. That is my current framework for building a website from beginning to end. I thought it also might be helpful to answer a few common questions I get here too. And the first one is usually, that seems like a lot of work. What about just building a super simple website? Well, here's the thing. You shouldn't cut corners on your process. Each piece is there for a reason. Think of it like a recipe. If you're making chocolate chip cookies and you decide to leave out the flour, then how good do you think those cookies will actually taste? Darn it. Now I want cookies. I've never made a fast site for a client that I didn't end up regretting halfway through the project. And I don't want you to go through that. So stick to your guns and stay true to your framework, whatever it may be. The only time I might make an exception is if the site is for a personal project. If I'm building a site just for a hobby I have or as a quick landing page for something I'm doing and it isn't for a client, then I might trim off a few of the steps. But I try to never do it for a client and I often try to avoid clients who start the conversation with, how about just doing a quick and simple website? Because that means they are committed to actually helping their audience but only in helping themselves. To serve the end user, you have to do things with them in mind at every step 
and that means not cutting corners. Of course, this all just begs the question, just how long does it take to implement this framework? I get it. It seems like there are a lot of moving pieces, but the short answer is if it is a client site and there are zero delays, which has never happened to me because there's always delays, then about two to three months. If I'm just building a site for myself, like the Akamai website site, then maybe a month or six weeks is the time frame. Another question I often get is, how many websites can you do at one time with this framework? Well, it really depends on two things, how much you have automated your systems and how much work you can delegate. Automating systems means using technology to take some of the heavy lifting off your hands, creating onboarding systems, content collection systems, client management portals, and other things like that all help to keep things streamlined and freeze up your time. Delegation requires bringing on team members, whether they are distributed or in person. I typically would say to get some automation in place first, since training new team members can often suck up some valuable time from project work. But again, say it with me, that is a topic for a future video. In any case, the more you can automate your systems and the more you can distribute work across your team, the more projects you can take on. But to start, just follow the framework and take note of where you can start the automation process. So that was a lot of information and I applaud you for sticking around this long. There are a few things I'd like you to keep in mind with this framework. First, this is just one system and it's only my most recent iteration. I've gone through countless number of these over the years and I'm always changing it. It is as much a work of art as a framework. So I advise you to take what you can use and leave out the parts that don't make sense for your situation. I think the most important thing is to communicate whatever process you follow to your client so that they know exactly what to expect. So today we went through every part of my 4D framework for designing a website, discovery, design, development, deployment, and covered the specific tasks I do during each phase and some tips on how to use them with a client project. This is a framework that is meant to be customized based on your needs for your projects and not a hard and fast set of rules. What didn't we cover? Well, I didn't tell you all the stuff that happens before or after those four Ds, but we will get to those in future videos. And I also didn't get into a lot of details on how to do each part, but again, future videos. So, you know, subscribe so you don't miss them. All right. So what is next? I'd also love to know what you think. Are there items you would add to the framework or things to take out? There are a lot of other items that could be included and some I have taken out for specific reasons and some I've put in for specific reasons, but I'd love to hear your ideas and learn from your experiences too. Please share your thoughts in the comments area below. So now that we have a framework, next week I'm gonna go through the first part for the Akamai Websites project and share my first steps of the discovery process. In the future, as my framework changes, I will post up new updates here on the channel. I'm guessing maybe each year I'll share that year's version of the framework. So it will be interesting to see how things change over time. Well, that's it for this video. If you found value in this information and liked learning about my framework, then be sure to click the like button below so other folks can find it too. And I hope to see you back here next week where I'll share some more information to help all of you new and aspiring web designers level up your professional and freelancing game. Until then, stay optimized.